Hey everybody, it's Pete. Good morning. How's it going today? Uh, just do me a quick favor. If you can just give me a quick audio visual check to make sure that you can see the screen, see my bookshelf and hear my voice. We'll kick started right off the bat. Uh, Milky Fade in there first every day. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Hey, Magpie. How are you? How are you? Uh, just out of curiosity, how long have you been trading? That would be like a pretty cool thing to start out with. Uh, hey, James, how's it going? Uh, let's see. All right. Rad Rat, good morning. Um, how long, let's start out with that question because that usually influences what we talk about during the morning. Um, hey, John, good morning, good morning. How long have you been trading? James Daniel, less than a year. Okay, very, very cool. So you've actually started trading during the, um, during the pandemic boom, <laughs> for lack of a better way of putting that. We actually discussed that yesterday morning too with the, um, the differences between is now a good time to trade. My gosh, is it an amazing time to trade right now? Uh, let's see. Hey, Deli, how are you? Good morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, good morning, Jonas. How are you? Marion Busiek, how are you? 10 months. Okay. You know what? Actually, it's a pretty interesting thing to start out with. Today. We got a lot to cover today, but um, what do you believe right now is your biggest roadblock from going from here to going here? Or what is your biggest roadblock right now to being consistent, to see your account go up every single month? What do you think is your biggest roadblock? Uh, let's see. Two Spiritual Sisters, good morning. Thanks for joining us today. Appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Hey, John, how's it going? Yep, big three are bullish. That's for sure. New all-time highs again yesterday. Uh, let's see. Uh, petrol head guru one. Do you trade uh, petrol head? Do you trade oil? <laughs> Energy stocks we're going to talk about today. They've been pretty strong. Uh, new trader three weeks. Okay, awesome. Awesome. That's really exciting, actually. Um, let's see. Uh, I look chipper. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I'm on my second cup of coffee. <laughs> Today was an early day. Um, let's see. Uh, Pamela Thomas. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. That again, I, I say this every time we talk, Pamela, that's my brother and my sister's name. <laughs> uh, it's so weird seeing that. Um, you know what, Rad Rat? Fear is interesting. Are you afraid of making a mistake or are you afraid of losing money? That's a big thing. And we can actually, we can overcome fear actually in a heartbeat. Uh, let's see, can the spy move up on low volume? Who's moving the market? Yeah, Kevin, that is actually, you know what? Let's actually start out with that. That's the million dollar question right now. Uh, and it's absolutely, you know, I'm gonna actually leave that on the screen because this is, if you look at this here, let me actually, um, let me split that up on the screen right now. If you look at what the market's doing right now, and you look at the decreasing volume, that is, that's not a recipe <laughs> for success. Um, it doesn't matter what we think should happen, but everybody's kind of on the same side of the boat right now, which can be dangerous where um, everybody's looking in one direction, but we just keep grinding higher, which is actually something to be discussed right now. Um, the market right now is not lacking a bias. We definitely know what direction we're going in right now, what we're lacking right now is consistent volatility from one day to the next. And that typically means that moving averages, uh, and I'll just pop the two common ones that I use on here for trend trading, moving averages typically become the tool to use when a market is slowly grinding. And you can see this here where on, on the screen, what we have right now is the 10 period moving average and the 20 period moving average. And depending on what you're looking at, it usually does a pretty good job of smoothing out uh, the price action. So right now you can see in the OIH, it's still grinding downtrend, but now we're actually just at the point where we could possibly be looking uh, to see it reverse. Um, all right. You know what? I want to keep going into this because these are, these are kind of the same uh, things that I've experienced myself. So fear. So two different people put in fear. Hey, Charles, good morning. Uh, James Daniel, lack of capital. That's a problem for everybody. Whether you have uh, $10,000 in your account or whether you have a million dollars in your account, there's always a higher level that we want to get to, right? Uh, I want to I come back and focus on fear, though. Uh, and I want, I'm, this is a good one as well, experience. I'm going to walk you through how to do that. Uh, finding it hard to select stocks for swing trading. Okay. Um, you know what? 
Interesting you say that because we're going to actually touch on that a little bit today. Uh, simplifying the process, Trade90X, I will tell you this. Um, the simpler the process, the easier it's going to be to follow it. There is no question about that. Um, let's see. Hey, Brian, good morning. What's up, pal? Uh, let's see. Let's see. Hot in Istanbul. Yeah, it's hot down in South Florida here too as well. <laughs> We've actually been having uh, steady 90s and steady rain down here. Uh, fear of missing out, all right? Uh, two years, but looking at IBD my whole life. Okay, yeah, IBD is a good, book, uh, good magazine, uh, good newspaper, I should say. A uh, bit of both, fear, okay? Uh, stopping out too early. Okay, you know what? Let's actually start out with that one. Actually, you know what? Let's start out with fear, and we'll, we'll go over here. Um, First, actually, you know, let me take care of uh, something that we need to talk about uh, to start out every day first. So we're going to actually put this in here and make sure that we get to that first. Okay, so that's actually a part of the process of what we do every day. We have to make sure that we're very clear that everything we discuss, everything we talk about um, is for educational purposes only. Ultimately, it's up for you to make your decisions. But my mission is to help you every single day learn to make better decisions, learn to have absolute conviction in your decisions. And we've had a couple of people today talk about uh, simplifying things, and that is beyond a shadow of a doubt, the number one thing to do. Um, I, I, I'm sure we've all used like uh, the craziest technical analysis stuff. We had everything on your screen. It gets really hard to make a decision. So when you look at the screen that I trade on, uh, this literally is the most simple uh, part of what I do. And I don't, I don't really clutter it with uh, too many different things because I just want to know, is it going up or down right now? Uh, and is that the only time frame that I'm looking at? The answer is no. This is one of the primary time frames. Uh, but I, you know, I, we got a couple of questions yesterday about kind of going behind the curtain and what I actually look at during the day. Um, and I, I just wanted to give some insight in how to simplify things. So if you take a look at this screen here, this is a screen of hourly charts, and you can see we have a dozen stocks on the screen right now. This is how I watch the market during the day. Once I have my list of stocks, I pop these stocks in there, and then as each hour unfolds, it's very easy for me to tell which stocks are in play. But the point that I want to get across here, whether we're looking at it here on the hourly chart from an active day trading perspective, so let's say for argument's sake, I'm going into the day, and these are going to be the stocks that I'm looking to trade. Um, you could do the same exact thing. Somebody mentioned before about swing trading and finding ideas. You can do the same exact thing, but do it with daily or weekly charts. As a matter of fact, if I was looking to um, narrow down my process and make it a lot easier. So let's say for argument's sake, we're looking at Chevron over here. What I would do is I would have the same list of stocks and I would have the weekly chart up. And this would actually tell me, remember we talked about yesterday and pretty much start out every day. Our process is following order flow. And that all came from the New York method when I had my trading floor in New York City. Everything we do has to say, what, where is the trend we're watching right now? An active trader is really not concerned with what happened three months ago, six months ago. We're kind of looking for the next move. So the question before about simplifying, the question before about um, which time frames we're watching to watch swing trades, I would use what we have here on the chart for CVX, I would be, if it's a longer time frame, I would have weekly charts over the last 20 days because that's from one week to the next. We're looking, is the order flow um, consistent? So you can see here in this window here, two weeks of buying, two weeks of indecision, a week of selling, and we came right back with buying so far this week. That's how I break it down and start to um, simplify everything I do. What I want to cover though, uh, which actually, you know what, I'm going to come back over to here, uh, which is this, okay? A lot of people, Ganka, actually talk about um, emotions and fear and that kind of stuff. And, and I want to, we're going to cover some stocks, but I want to answer everybody's questions because you're spending the time with me right now. So I want to make sure that I get into what your questions are. So type a yes into the chat right now. Um, if when you put on a trade, your heart kind of like <laughs> pounds out of your chest, and every time it goes up and down, up and down, you're like, yeah, no, yeah, no. And um, your emotional roller coaster just keeps going back and forth. Type in yes if you've experienced that. I, I can definitely tell you that's something that I went through in the past 
but you can actually fix it in a heartbeat. Uh, so James, yes, um, I went through it. There's not even a question about that, but there's a simple way to get around it because fear and uh, being afraid to make the wrong decision and being afraid to lose money are probably the primary fears for us as traders. Um, and obviously like you, I, you know, you take, you have a notebook, uh, and you're constantly writing your notes every single day. Hopefully you're journaling at the end of every day. So I'm going to teach you right now how I eliminated the fear of losing money. And I know that's a really big statement, but we're going to get right into it right now because it's, it's clearly an issue with a lot of people. Uh, first, we can all admit, uh, you know, again, raise your hand. I'll definitely raise my hand. Losing money sucks. <laughs> Nobody wants to lose money, right? You know, you're not putting on a trade or, or opening your trading account. Um, for any other reason, then you want to see your account growth go higher and higher and higher, right? But here's the thing. We have to admit that we're running a trading business. And running a trading business means that there is going to be, you know, I'm going to actually leave that up on the screen. A couple of people just asked for that. Um, I'm going to leave that like that so people could still see it. That That's actually the setup that I have on my, my daily, my charts intraday. So here's the thing. Here's, here's what I want to teach you. And it's important that you write this down because this is life changing stuff. OK, how to completely eliminate the fear of losing money, how to completely eliminate the stress of losing trades. OK, there's two ways. The first one is the dollar amount you choose to risk. And the second one is actually make more in your winning trades. So think about it. Let's let's pretend that you own a business right now, which we don't have to pretend. If you're on this call right now, you probably have a trading business, right? You have an account. You're you're here because you're passionate about the markets. So the first one, the first way to completely eliminate it is you need to risk a dollar amount that you're completely okay with putting in harm's way. So in other words, if if you like an idea and you decide you want to trade that idea. The, before you even look at stop losses and entry targets and all of that kind of stuff, it's imperative that you have a trading plan that you wrote down that you know how much you're willing to risk per trade. That has nothing to do with the stop loss. It has nothing to do with the entry price. It has nothing to do with the stocks. It's mental. We just talked about fear and the emotion and all that kind of stuff. You don't have to write, don't put it in, in the chat. This is all personal for you. What do you typically risk per trade? If you want to share it, that's fine. But you need to know what you're willing to risk per trade. Now, here's where traders mess this up in, in a monstrous, monstrous way. They pick a number that is way out of their comfort zone so that if a stock goes down and starts taking, getting close to their stop loss, they move it a nickel. They move it another nickel. They move it another dime or a dollar, which means you never accepted the dollar amount in the first place. 8%. Okay. So Ross, I'm going to assume that's a swing trade, right? That's IBD type stuff. You're normally willing to risk 8%. Now there's a difference. If you're willing to risk, and I want to be super clear on this. So I'm actually glad this was typed in here. Okay. Uh, let me actually, let me come back over here and put that up there. So when we're talking about dollar amount per risk, I'm not talking about the stop loss. Investors Business Daily uses an 8% stop loss. We are not talking about the stop loss. We are talking about what percentage of your capital, what dollar amount are you willing to risk per trade? So I'm just going to straight up tell you, risking 8% on one trade is a monstrous risk. I don't care who you are. <laughs> That's a really big risk on a trade. So if you have $100,000 in your account, just using round numbers, if you have $100,000 in your account, that means you're willing to risk $8,000 per trade. That's a big number. That means you only have nine trades to be wrong before you wipe your account out. That's a big number. Maybe maybe uh, 12 trades, actually. What percentage of your account becomes the dollar amount? So I just want to give you, uh, again, the whole point of this is eliminating fear. Okay, so I'm going to leave that 8% up on the screen right here. Uh, let's see, Milky, <laughs> unfortunately, the gambler in me refuses to die easily. That's a big problem for trading. It's a giant problem for trading. Uh, let's see. Uh, hey, Phil, how's it going today? Uh, $200, $500. Okay. So let's see one more here. Uh, never risk more than 0.5% or 1% a dollar. Okay. Everybody snapshot that. Take a snapshot of that answer right now. That is a perfect answer. 
Okay, and and I want to. I'm going to actually leave that on the screen there for a second. Actually, you know, I'll take it down for a second. Uh, I'm going to pop this up on the screen here for a second. Um, if you find what we're doing valuable here, please do me a favor, click down and subscribe. It let me know that you're really enjoying the content. But here's the thing, and and I know we're going to get to the stocks in a second. Okay. If you want to eliminate the fear of trading, you need to risk each trade that is in line with two things. Number one, how much you're willing to lose and be okay with that. So in other words, you put the trade on, it goes down there. And before the trade, you're like, you know what? I really like this idea. If I lose money on this idea, it was a good idea. And if it becomes a loss, I understand it's a business expense and I'm okay with that. So in other words, you enter here, it goes down here. You're like, all right, I'm out. I'll go to the next trade. I purposely pause there because that is the secret to lasting in this business. Here's what you want to write down. And you want to write this down in a big, in a big way. You need to manage the downside every single trade so that you're around long enough to get to the other side, which is understanding how to make money. The biggest mistake that people make right away is they just jump straight into risking far too much and they never give themselves a chance because now you're not managing the trade anymore. You're managing your heartbeat going up and down. You don't want to do that. Pick a dollar amount. I don't care if it's $50. I don't care if it's $25. I don't care if it's $500, but it needs to be a dollar amount. I'm telling you, this is life changing. When you pick a dollar amount that you are okay with risking per trade, if that trade moves against you, you exit it like a professional, like you're running a business. It doesn't matter if it's a pizza business, a deli, an accounting services. It's the same thing as paying your electric bill. I am telling you, this is life changing. Everything changes. You take the loss, you go to the next trade. You take the profit, you go to the next trade. It's nothing more than running your business. So if you are afraid of losing money, you just haven't picked that dollar amount yet that you're comfortable with putting at risk so that you can learn to make money, learn to manage yourself and the markets. So that's the first thing. Uh, Chris Mooney, who's been with us for a while, absolutely, positively, one of the members of our, of our boot camp and our private community who took this to heart literally from the first time that we worked together. And Chris gave himself a chance to learn how to trade, which means that you're focusing on the trade and focusing on the process and focusing on probabilities as opposed to I'm up money, I'm down money, I'm up money, I'm down money, I'm up money, I'm down money. I'm getting, <laughs> I'm exhausted even just talking about it right now. Let's talk about the second part of risking money. Raise your hand and I'll do that. I'll raise my hand as well. You put on a trade. As soon as you put that trade on, it moves in your favor, moves against you, moves in your favor, against you. But then it gets to the point where it's moving against you or, you know what? I'll give you an example from yesterday. And, and this is actually a real example from yesterday's price action. If you remember, we talked about Apple a couple of days ago. Actually, you know, let me put it up on the screen. We talked about Apple a couple of, day, couple of days ago. We talked about buying the breakout. We called the breakout out in our community and we had a stop loss. That came close to getting stopped out yesterday, but didn't quite get stopped out. And we'll actually take a look at yesterday's price action, right? Started trading down, pushed down to this area. We didn't get stopped out. So you know what we did yesterday? Exactly what I'm about to tell you, what is normal for traders. Real trading, okay, real trading. Real trading is not set it and forget it. You're managing your risk, looking to get a head start on a trade. Moves in your favor, you need to have a plan of where you're gonna to add to that position. Moves, and, and again, this just makes so much sense, but you wanna keep it simple. If you enter here and it moves in your favor, you need a plan to say, what am I gonna, how and when am I gonna pyramid into that trade? Because it's working. But you get that kind of gray zone where it moves in your favor a little, moves against you. But then you take a look at this chart of Apple. We had our stop loss in there, but selling came into the market. The market was trading at all-time highs. And for whatever reason, I don't care the reason, I don't care why, I have my trade on and Apple started moving against us in a way that it should not have with the way the rest of the market was trading and the way the stocks and tech stocks were, were rallying yesterday, although financial stocks were probably the strongest uh, on the board yesterday. I reduced my position. Write that down. If a trade you're in is not working or, or is moving quickly against you, but you're not stopped out, but you love the idea, if you have a thousand shares, take 500 off the table. Lower your risk until the idea and you get feedback from the market and it starts to move back in your favor. These trade management things are everything because you're taking the risk off until you get feedback. Remember, every single thing we do 
is about feedback in the market. Are we getting feedback in a positive way? Are we getting feedback in a way where it's moving against us? Trading is not set it and forget it. If you want to be the reason you make money, you need to understand how to scale up and scale back on positions, lower your risk, and then add your exposure. But you start out with what we talked about today, which is how professional traders eliminate all of the stress of being afraid to lose money. You need to pick a dollar amount that you're comfortable with. And again, a couple of people here today said 0.5%. So what does that mean? So that means if you're trading $10,000, it's 0.5% of $10,000. If it's 1%, it's 1% of 10,000. Whatever you decide to allocate to your trading account. I can't, I can't stress this. Once you accept the dollar amount, now you can allow yourself to breathe and actually learn if what you're doing is working in a way that it's constructive as opposed to, oh my gosh, I lost money. Oh my God, I made money. You don't want to do that. You want to manage your process so that everything you do is what's called the scientific method, which is nothing more than you put on a trade, you get feedback. You put on a trade, you get feedback. And if you're doing that with manageable risk, you're staying in the game long enough with, to get to the other side to understand how to make more. But if you blow your account up, raise your hand. How many times have you had to refund your account because you're not making money yet? Type in yes. I've done it in the past. It's dopey. <laughs> Why would we keep risking more if we're not getting the feedback that we want? So again, what we do, and we'll just pop over here to the weekly chart and we'll take a look. We'll go over to the cues. We look at the weekly chart and we want to know in the order flow process, let me actually expand that a little bit more. Um, are we getting positive feedback that tells us right now our best guess on putting on these trades? And every look, let's face it, probability is a guess. Our best guess, are we getting feedback that what we're looking at is trading in the direction that we want to? So please, 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 please promise me right now, as soon as we get off this call, the first thing I want you to consider is what dollar amount are you willing to risk that allows you to learn how to trade? And the longer you're in the market, the other side of the trade is how you start to learn how to make more money. So you're managing your risk while you're learning how to trade and you're getting feedback. And again, what we do is order flow trading. As you start to lose less money, here's the curve. You lose money, lose money, lose money start to lose less money, and then you come out the other side where you're starting to make more money. There's that point where you're losing consistently. That means that you have not stopped doing what doesn't work. <laughs> I know that's a lot of double negatives in there, but you got to write down, write in the journal what's not working. That's another thing for today. Write down what absolutely does not work and stop doing that. <laughs> stop picking tops, stop picking bottoms. Stop trading size until you understand how to make money. So again, if you just happen to join us on the call right now, I want to thank everybody. I really, really appreciate it. Um, if you missed the beginning of the call, pick a dollar amount that you're willing to risk so you are comfortable with that. If the trade moves against you, you're learning. As your P&L, as your profit and loss starts to migrate to higher and higher levels, then you increase it from, let's say, half a percent up to maybe 1% because you're understanding how to make money when it's good and understanding how to scale back when it's tough. And I said yesterday, I have found August to be a little bit of a challenging month. The rotation has been so quick. So because of that, you can learn from me that I've, I've cut back my position sizing. So maybe it's two or 3% down to 1% because I'm not feeling it. The, the consistency from one day to the next hasn't been there. So I've lowered my exposure. You take some smaller losses, smaller, uh, smaller gains, throw a few gains in there like yesterday. Hopefully you, you um, hopefully you watch this with us yesterday. We actually talked about this yesterday morning. We've been talking, we actually talked about Penn about a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks ago. And this is what Penn did yesterday. So when you keep your losses reasonable in a tougher market or while you're learning, you get these kind of moves over a four day period and you learn how to size up your trades. Uh, I do want to give everybody a trade that I'm looking at for today. I uh, just want to make sure that I pay everybody back for what you're, you're giving me your time today. Datadog is going to be one of the stocks that I'm going to be paying attention to today. It meets all of the criteria. If we start out here, it's paused now. It's at a breakout level. The weekly charts still look good with the pause, and the monthly chart looks just amazing. We're actually pausing right in front of all-time highs today. So that's going to be one of the top stocks on my radar 
heading into today. Again, obviously, we mentioned yesterday, Penn and um, DraftKings, two stocks that exploded yesterday. Now, these stocks are very much extended beyond what they normally do. So these stocks would just be day trades for me now, not swing trades. We're going to wait for them to pause a little bit. Okay. So what's the big takeaway from today? The big takeaway from today is you can eliminate the fear of losing money with the right position size. Now, here's how you tie that all together, because I can actually see in the comments here, um, what does that mean for how big you trade? So let's say we pick 1% or a half percent. That's the dollar amount you're willing to risk. So 1% of 10,000. Okay. So now you know the dollar amount. Now you take the difference between your entry price and your stop loss. And let's just say, let's just say it's a dollar just to keep the math super, super simple. $100 and a $1 stop loss. That means you're trading a hundred shares. So you're willing to risk a hundred dollars. You have a $1 stop loss. Now you just sit back. You're like, okay, I'm comfortable with that dollar amount. Now we just let the trade play itself out. So you're gaining experience without blowing your account up. And then you're learning how to make money. So remember, there's two stages, three. Let's just use three. Okay, three simple steps. Number one is pick a dollar amount. Number two is manage the downside. Number three is learn how to make money. And remember, chart reading is different from trading. Traders look to make money. Chart readers kind of look for patterns. So we're talking about is a much deeper level of understanding what it means to look at that chart. So if we look at DraftKings right now, or let's, you know what, let's take a look at a different one. Let's take a look at CRM. CRM had earnings yesterday. It's up $7 this morning. So we're going to be looking to actively trade CRM. So it doesn't matter if it's a $10 stock. Somebody asked about XPEV before. Um, earnings today, XPEV has earnings. $40 stock versus a $240 stock. And this is the biggest thing that I want, I want you to get across today because it's, 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 it's life-changing. I, I honestly, I don't know if there's any other way to say it. Again, when buying stocks, when you choose that dollar amount, it doesn't matter if you're trading a $40 stock or a $240 stock. It's not more risky because you're still risking the same $100. You're just risking it with a different share size. Please write that down. When you understand this and actually start to use it, it eliminates all of the fear of losing money because you are never risking a dollar amount you're not comfortable with. The number one reason smart traders struggle is they don't give themselves a chance to learn. And we all have, we all pay the market's tuition in losses when we first start trading or while we're learning. It's up to you to determine how big that tuition is. Why would you spend $20,000 in trading loss tuition when you could lower your dollar amount per trade and give yourself a chance to learn so that your expenses are small while you're gaining experience, while you're learning discipline, while you're getting out where you said you would, and then getting on the other side where you understand how to hold good trades longer. Remember, the second part of that equation is understanding the market conditions, which again, we talk about these every single day, the market conditions when it's better and more of that smart money is all on the same page. And this is actually, you can see 826. This is Thursday heading into what we're looking at today. So there's a lot of different ideas, technology, communication services, and energy stocks. As we've mentioned, the energy stocks are not in play yet, but I want to make sure that we talk about some uh, tech stocks today. Uh, we mentioned, you know what? We actually mentioned Netflix yesterday, and it's kind of on the radar, this five, six, uh, 560 level is the big level that we're watching in Netflix. Want to keep an eye on that one. RBLX is another one that we've actually had in the community that we've been watching. You can see it broke the downtrend, really good solid move, opening up a little bit lower today with the rest of the market. Uh, let's see. Actually, Rich is talking about a short sale. You know what? I want to talk about this. Okay. I want to talk about this in a meaningful way because it's actually a good question. First, we'll pull up the chart of FSLR. Okay. So let's talk about this. Let's talk about probability. Let's talk about what is the what is the right idea putting on a new trade. So we have FSLR. We're going to leave that on the screen. And I want to talk about this. We had members and people on these calls a week ago, two weeks ago, saying Michael Burry says the market's going down. All of this inflation talk about, and let's say even going back a month ago. Could Michael Burry be correct? Could be. <laughs> Is Kathy Wood correct? 
Could be, maybe. What's more important, being fearful about what might happen or paying attention to what's going on right now? Right now, for the last 18 months, maybe let's say, let's say March of 2020 to now, the, the, the right side of the big blue line is pointing higher. If you are looking to sell short in a market where everything is pushing higher for the most part and the easier order flow is going up, short selling, I understand you want to capture it prior to it rolling over. And I'm leaving this on the screen here for a reason. I made this. It was the biggest mistake I made when I first for the first two years I traded way back in 2000. I started trading April 17th of 2000. The biggest mistake I made was trying to trade against the current order flow. Here's what will end up happening. We'll use FSLR as an, as an example. You're looking at the stock. You're like, okay, it's rolling over a little bit, relative weakness to the market. It could go down today, but is that the right trade when we're sitting and resting at all-time highs? The order flow is at this direction right now. It's, it's going up. Could the market go down today? Sure it could. Is it the... Is it the same side of all of that money? No. Is this a sell short on a scale of one to 10? Well, it's at a breakout level. It's near highs for the last several months. It's got some room to go up to 108, which is roughly another $15. Could this stock go down today? Sure. Is that the best trade on the board right now? Now we're looking at stocks like this that are exploding to the upside. Now we're looking at stocks that are grinding higher and higher and higher. This is the difference between finding the easier trades and fighting the current order flow. I made that mistake for the first couple of years that I traded. When you look at a stock like D-Dog, that's resting at all-time highs, looking for an opportunity to buy versus FSLR. And, and look, I'm just going to tell you straight up, um, who, who put it that went in there? Um, I want to make sure I see who that was. Uh, all right, doesn't matter. I forgot who that was. Um, I did this for years. The first two years I traded, I'm like, okay, the market should roll over. This stock is showing some weakness. I'm going to put on a sell short in this stock right now. But I missed out on the easier money. This is hard money. This is the hard money. This is your fighting, grinding, trying to make this stock pull back when you have all of these other stocks rocketing to the moon. And I'll give you another example, one uh, that we actually had a swing trade on that we put on uh, NVIDIA. It's much easier to follow the deep pockets that move the money instead of trying to guess when it's going to reverse. What we do is we piggyback what's already going on. So if you look at this trade here in NVIDIA, I'm not looking for a top. I'm just looking to stay long with them as long as it's still in play. Morgan Stanley's another one, right? The XLF yesterday, we just take a quick look on this. And again, getting a little bit into sector rotation. The XLF has been really strong for five days. We've been watching Morgan Stanley and some of the other banking stocks. Morgan Stanley made new all-time highs yesterday, trading very close to new all-time highs already. Why would I make trading my life complicated when there are people with much, much deeper pockets, billions and billions of dollars creating this in the market why wouldn't we just piggyback what they're already doing? The only question we have at the end of that is understanding when it could potentially reverse. But that's a part of trading. If you know when it's going in that direction, you need to know, are you trading momentum or are you a trend trader? We'll have a, you know what? We'll discuss that tomorrow. We're going to discuss tomorrow the difference in profit taking, trend trading versus momentum trading. So again, FSLR, could it go down today? Sure. Would that be the best trade on the board today? No, not when we're looking at a picture like that. I want to go in there and say all of that money's on the same side. I'm going to join all of that money until I see it change. Could the market turn over today? Could it start heading down? Sure. The first thing we looked at today is this picture. And it was actually the very first question that we got today, which is this picture doesn't make sense. The market keeps going higher and the volume keeps drying up. It doesn't make sense. But we're still going up. We should still be looking for longs until we see some sort of price action change. So maybe we'll on the hourly chart, maybe, maybe we'll draw trend lines. Maybe we'll look for a breakdown of yesterday. That's what's important. It's not just, I definitely want to be long. You have to say, I want to be long until when, until this changes. 
It's both sides. We had somebody the other day saying, but why, but why, but why? I don't care why it's still going up, but I have, I have price action in place that tells me if and when it changes. So trying to pick the top, which um, I'm not saying that's what we're saying here. We are looking, it was a question about FSLR short, trying to pick a top when everything else is going up and just buying with everybody. Again, I'm going to, I'm going to really make this emphasized here. Why would we fight that? <laughs> Why would we fight that? Isn't it just easier to find where the deep pockets are already allocating money and say, you know what, I'm going to take a nibble. <laughs> That's what we do all day, every day. The quicker you can get on board with that and understand how to recognize when it's obvious and then learn to recognize when it changes, you have all the pieces. You have the risk management we talked about today. You have the order flow, <laughs> the order flow, and then the only, the only last piece is determining when has that changed. That's all we do all day, every day. And that's how we keep it simple. All right. Uh, it's already eight o'clock, everybody. Um, I have to head on over to our private boot camp meeting, which starts uh, at 830. Uh, it's our daily game plan meeting. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, I want to join the boot camp. What's the next step after 30 days? Look, I want to make this clear as well. Um, the boot camp is a 30 day interactive coaching program. If you want to continue after that, We'll discuss that. We might be a good fit. We might not be a good fit, but there's nothing after 30 days. It's not a subscription unless you want to continue after 30 days. It's basically a 30-day seminar where I give you my entries and exits too. So you get this kind of stuff, but you get the actual entries and exits on my day trades and swing trades as well. So uh, look, I, I just want to tell everybody, um, I you can see I get really excited about teaching. Um, I want you to know how much I appreciate that you're here with me today. Um, if I provide value during these calls, if you could please do me a favor, just click down and subscribe. That would mean everything to me because it means that I'm helping you. If you have more questions about what we talked about today, leave a comment. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But here's the number one thing. I want you to know that I got you back. The biggest thing is I just need you to participate. The stuff that we're doing on, on these uh, live streams on Stocks for Breakfast is just the start. And you can see how much I'm giving you now. I'm going to head on over. We have to cut the call short now because now I go over to our private meeting, our boot camp meeting. Um, I want to thank you for being here. But if you want to go deeper with this, where you get my entries and exits in real time, click the link below the video and learn more about the boot camp. If not, you want to stay here with me on those live streams. I'm 100% okay with that too. You just have to make a decision on how much deeper you want to go down the order flow rabbit hole with me. So thank you so much, everybody. I really appreciate it. I have to go because we got to get ready for the other call. Have an awesome day, everybody. Thank you so much.